A mischief, a miracle, a legend. From the empty life of North Africa to an unexpected life on Snetterton Heath, she was led to her freedom. She was known as Lady Mo, Queen of the Heath. Lady Mo was a donkey bred as one of a Tunisian species. Before her time in the 96th Bombardment Group, she lived in the Algerian slum in Tunisia, North Africa, when she was only a few months old. When she lived in the Algerian slum, she was not treated well. She was starved and cuffed by her owners. She was barely two feet tall during her life in North Africa. On August the 17th, 1943, a 96th Bombardment Group division, named the Miracle Tribe, landed in North Africa after a bombing mission in Riesenberg. During their stay in North Africa, the Miracle Tribe decided to bring back a mascot. Louise Kilmchak considered a dog too ordinary, while Coots Matthews suggested a camel. Andrew Miracle wanted to bring back an Arab maiden, but knew that he would be charged for kidnapping. Then an Arabian boy came up to the Miracle Tribe and told them that his family might have a donkey for sale. When the Miracle Tribe found the donkey starving, they all agreed that a donkey did qualify as a mascot. Klimchak and co-pilot James Harris made an $80 deal with the Arabian family. The donkey's name was then known by her Christian name, Lady Mo. On August 24th, 1943, the Miracle Tribe decided to bring Lady Mo to RAF Snetterton Heath in England. However, most animals would not survive the low-level oxygen during a flight. So Lady Mo, the Tunisian donkey, was stationed in a radio room of the B-17 while she was fitted with an oxygen mask. Sergeant George Gray was appointed as Lady Mo's keeper. On the Miracle Tribe's journey back to England, Lady Mo had to take part in a bombing mission in Bordeaux, France. After completing the mission, the Miracle Tribe headed straight for home. The Miracle Tribe was the first to arrive back on base. After the Miracle Tribe landed, the crew were welcomed by cheers from the crowd and the press. Suddenly, their new mascot of a 96 bombardment group took the crowd by surprise as she popped her hairy head out of a waste gunner's window. It was that day that Lady Mo became a legend. Well, that was quite a surprise because uh, we was, it happened to be all the time and uh, knock at the door and the uh, American came and said he'd got something to show us. So he took us uh, up to road to the aircraft and that was still in the aircraft, the donkey looking out of the base, out of the side windows. And uh, that, for being a child, never seen one like that, but quite a surprise for us. And uh, a very small and they uh, sort of, they were all thrilled, just like we was to, see it, they were thrilled to have it, and just laughing at saying they brought it back from Africa. On the day of Lady Mo's arrival, Lady Mo became Queen of the Heath. Lady Mo also gained worldwide fame the second she popped her head out of the window. Snetterton Airfield was her new home. She was known as the greatest jackass to have flown a combat mission. On the next day, Lady Mo quickly adopted to life with the 8th Air Force men on the base. It was once said to me by one of the Americans, I mean, the conditions that those poor little donkeys lived in in North Africa, I mean, they were only used as uh, means of transport and carting materials and stuff like that. And of course, they had a very hard life. 
I mean, when she'd have been big enough, I mean, she'd have been loaded up with um, stuff and carted stuff about, probably, I wouldn't say ill-treated, but not having a very good life over there. And with the Americans bringing her back as they did, she, she lived a life of luxury to what she would have had if, if, if she'd have stayed in North Africa. Well, she used to just a room where she liked after they'd got her, sort of brought her, had her about there and sort of looked after and got so she got a little bigger and then she just roamed where she liked and us being children we'd lay out under the trees sometimes reading on a Sunday and reading a book or a comic and next thing we knew I'd come right quietly up to you and sort of push into you and let you know she was there and she used to just sort of be here, there and everywhere. You never knew where you was going to see her. And uh, they used to give us cigarette ends. Or she used to like them, to chew them. And they were always given her anything I, what she liked. Donuts was the favourite. And uh, so she, she, she seemed to grow quicker with all the stuff they were feeding her. And... Uh, just, just sort of, she got so she just uh, natural to see her or anywhere, wherever you went, you'd love to see her. On base, Lady Mo was known to be disobedient, stubborn, cantankerous, belligerent, and greedy. She even had a habit of chewing cigarettes and toilet paper. She, uh, I don't know, well, sorry. Behaviour on the base. Well, I only see her when we was round where we were. Some parts of the base we wasn't allowed to go. So she she had a room and place. She could go where we couldn't. But she'd always be up near the mess hall and wherever there was food, you'd find her about looking for odds and ends, sweets or anything off of them. And uh, she she got a temperance, so she'd. If she didn't like it, what they were doing, she'd soon kick out. <laughs> you'd, you'd know if you was in the way of her back legs. Well, I was told this by, by one of the, the uh, he was a bombardier, um, he's dead now, but uh, he told me that he was, he was going through a bit of a low time and he got a bottle of rum and he was in his hut and he was drinking this rum and Mo walked in. And he said, uh, I got my steel helmet, put some rum in it. He said, a little bit of grape juice. And he said, she drank it. And he said, really, she got drunk. He said, she just went down and laid down for a time. He said, she was really uh, <laughs> half drunk by the time I finished. <laughs> I mean, that, that happened all the time, those sort of things. I mean, she, she was uh, always teased, I suppose, by some of the guys, you know, they, they, they had pranks, you know, uh, as, as only young fellas as they were, 18, 19, 20 years old would do. Yeah. Despite her questionable behaviour, Lady Mo was certainly a sight to be seen. Lady Mo was loved by the public. Not even the officers of the 8th Air Force teasing her could put her down. The greatest jackass to have flown a combat also survived other events during the war, such as German air raids and the rack of V-1 and V-2 rockets. She also managed to withstand victory in Europe and victory in Japan celebrations. Lady Mo also had duties to perform for the 96th Bombardment Group and her country. She participated in various patriotic events in England, such as promoting the war bond drive and the Army-Navy football game in London when she substituted for the army mule mascot in 1944. She even joined the Queen in a charity event that raised $1,500, although, unfortunately, not a single penny was raised. She was pretty famous because she was probably the only donkey mascot that the, the 8th Air Force had. I mean, they were, on other bases they did have mascots. Um, but, uh, I mean, there was lots of dogs and stuff like that about, but, uh, I mean, Mo was quite unique. And, of course, she, she got film coverage of when they came back from the North African shuttle mission of her uh, arriving back. And as one guy told me that um, they were on pass in London and they went to the cinema 
and the newsreels came on and they said this bomb group arriving back from uh, North Africa and he said we saw the aircraft taxiing in and he said we suddenly realised that they, that was our group and he said suddenly they, <laughs> this plane taxi passed and the cameras panned out of the waistcoat window and there was <laughs> there was middle of the, of the waist, uh, looking out the waist window and you know he said that we couldn't believe it because to, to see that and um, and of course as she was like the mascot um, they had their um, public relations officer here who yeah, it was his job to send uh, reports back you know to the um, media in America, stuff like that, and obviously they, uh, Mo was, uh, there was stuff sent back about her, and um, and of course they decided, uh, like when they had a war bond drive, I mean they made a, uh, a, a sort of cloth that she put over her back, you know, buy war bonds and things like that, and uh, then they took her as, as a mascot for the Army Air Force when they played the, the Navy at the White City in um, in London, and uh, they took Mo down there as the mascot. I think the Navy had a, a goat, I think, or something like that. <laughs> but you know, she was she was pretty famous on this base, and then, and of course they used her where they could for publicity. Throughout her time with the 96th Bombardment Group, Lady Mo gained numerous awards and achievements: the Presidential Unit Citation with one cluster, the English Touring Opera. Theatre Ribbon with six battle stars, fifth overseas stripe, six months overseas marks and the Good Conduct Medal for one year's good behaviour. In fact, two places have actually been named after the donkey herself, the Lady Mo Ballpark and the Lady Mo Movie Theatre. She was just a unique thing uh, to have on base. Um, that, was, that was the only reason. I mean. She, she, I, know, I know she was given a, a credit for taking part in a mission, but of course um, when they came back from North Africa they bombed the target at Bordeaux on the way back. So in actual fact she did partake in, in a mission. And she also had, um, they sort of, you know, gave her a long service uh, award, you know, because she, she spent almost two years with the group over here. and. Uh, I don't think that, you know, other than that, I mean, they celebrated her birthday sort of thing when she came to the base and that sort of thing. But uh, apart from that, uh, she didn't achieve that much, only adding a little bit of publicity to the, to the, to the group at times. I think she, she was, they were a long way away from home and they'd got stuff and they, the Merrick's got stuff and they really appreciated, you know, and loved, they loved to have her about and I think she it was... Welcome by them all, and they they looked up to her, and they'd have stuff and they'd got to look forward to taking to the ball games and different things. Wherever they went, they seemed as if they took to big occasions. For the remainder of her days on Snetterton Heath, Lady Mo lived a life of freedom and comfort. However, on October the third, nineteen forty-five, the freedom of Lady Mo took a sad turn. Lady Mo wandered off base and onto a railway track. This led to Lady Mo being killed instantly by a train. Every single person who knew the donkey were all saddened. As you can see, far ahead on the railway, there is a shed on the left side of a track where Lady Mo was killed and where she is now buried. Well, we were quite disappointed when we heard she got killed on the railways because we was looking forward to, they kept saying they were going to leave her to run about. We looking forward to having her about there if they would let her, like the public would let her keep running around. They, we were looking forward to having her about there. So we, a lot of us were about there. We were very disappointed when she died or got killed. And uh, that's all I can sort of say about it. That was, sort of a sad time for them who were left still about there as well as everybody who knew her. During Lady Moe's precious times at the airfield, she lived a life of freedom. Her freedom had a majority of upsides, 
and its eventual downside. From my point of view, when I, with all the research I've done from with the 96, you know, uh, and I think she was pretty unique, and that's that's, that's what I can all I can say about her. What I've seen, you know, uh, from red and, and photographs of her. I mean, that was really something unique to the 96 bomb group. Uh, I, I always, she was a thing, I always looked forward to seeing her when she was about, I, I, we, we just loved her as a animal and uh, being children I think she liked to come up near us and let us uh, coach her and do and I, as I've told you I've, I've ridden on her just at, at times and uh, we've uh, Always looking, as I said, we're always looking out for her. And she was, she was a friend of us as children. We'd never had only a dog and a cat. We'd never had a big animal. And uh, time before she got, time she sort of finished her time, got killed. She was getting quite a size for a, what we thought for a donkey. And but uh, now we 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 sort of really liked to have her around when she was about. To see her, and the only thing my dad said, don't bring her in the yard on my garden. <laughs> She'd soon make a mess of it. Yes. Snetterton may have lost their fellow mascot of a 96 bombardment group, but her memories and the name of Lady Mo will always remain within the 96 bombardment group history. She had something that she never had back in North Africa a well-deserved family. She will always remain a legend throughout the world. She was a symbol of hope, freedom and happiness in such a dark time during the war. As we remember the men of the 96th Bombardment Group, Lady Mo will always be remembered as the Queen of the Heath. <laughs>